Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Joe Yates and tonight we will be ripping apart the R200 diff that I've been working on. We're going to be pulling out the center, which is a viscous type LSD center, and we're going to be repacking it with new shims. This is a relatively easy job to do and it actually doesn't take that much time or money. So what you need really is some of these. These are just replacement shims and they come in different thicknesses and different sizes. They're only about 10 or $15 each. And I brought them from EFI Solutions here in Brisbane. If you're in Australia, you probably already know about them, but they're really great. I got express postage and they arrived the next day. So this is all we need and some time and patience. Let's get started. Okay, so drain the oil out of the diff if you haven't already before you go taking the top hat off, off the diff. Okay, the diff hat's off and now it's time to remove the stub axles. So to do that, grab a, ideally a soft face hammer and it's just a matter of Striking the flange with a bit of force and hopefully we'll be able to get it to pop out. So that's one. Alright, that's one stub axle out. And on the end of it you can see a circlip. So that's what holds the shaft in. They're a bit of a pain to get out, a bit of a pain to get in. Same again on the other side. Oh, that one was much easier. Keep pulling on it, it'll eventually come out. Cool. Sweet. And what I suggest is taking note which side's which, because you'll get them mixed up, one's longer than the other, right? Okay, this is where I recommend marking the caps for the bearings for each side. Alright, once you've marked which side's which, time to buzz off the bolts for the caps. And then you can get like a pry bar or a flat blade screwdriver that you can use as a pry bar and just pry. So you might just take this gasket off so that we don't damage it. And reuse the gasket and clean it and reseal it. Okay, again. One cap. Okay, now the center should just lift out with a bit of persuasion, of course. If you leave it on the crown wheel bolts, that'll help a lot. Just a little tip if you're struggling like me right now. Okay guys, so we got the center out with much persuasion. We eventually got it out. Time to bring in the big gun. Alright, so that is it. That's the center out. Okay, now we need an impact screwdriver. Alright, that cracked it very easily. But yeah, you, you really do need an impact screwdriver. Now we can split apart the diff center. Oh, so grab a little flat blade screwdriver and just get in underneath that disc. 
To get to the other side where the other disc is located, we need to remove the planetary gear set inside. This is the disc we'll actually be replacing. We'll be measuring that up and we'll be comparing what's in there now and thinking about how much we actually want to make it tighter. So now it's time to remove the planetary gear gears. I'm hoping that they all won't just fall out on me. If you're careful, if you're careful, you may be able to get lucky. And I think we have. Okay, I've just cleaned up the ring gear and all the bolts. Um, each half of the LSD center and this shim. This is one of the shims that we can reuse and if you look there's actually not much wear at all on this side which is really good but um, on this half we have quite a significant amount of wear there really uneven wear and if you have a look at the shim you can see there's been like a lot of heat spots and actually where the metal has melted um, yeah, particularly this side. So you, you see all those heat spots. So yeah, that's the part number for the one mil shim. And I've got two of those. So we can use these two. And this one which I measured is about 1.1 or 1.2. So yeah, I just went and brought a cheap kit. Uh, this is really what I needed here, this little bad boy here. Um, that just fits in a drill and you can screw a backing plate onto it like this. This is a slightly larger one and you can put sanding discs on it. Um, so yeah, the aim of the game is really just to use it with a drill and make that surface as flat as possible. Okay guys, just so that you can see what I'm doing, just got this bit down in here and just very carefully, just lightly, to put the drill down sorry guys i gotta do this with two hands okay this is after just cleaning it up and i think that's good enough it's a it's a hell of a lot better than what it did look like so this will just provide a good mating service to the shim and the internal center of the lsd um, now we just need to clean up the surface here it's just a little bit you can see there's some heat marks and i've just got some wet and dry Alright, I'm happy with that. It's at least an improvement over what it was like beforehand. To be perfectly honest, it's just going to get more heat spots. Okay guys, so what we have here is the original shim on the side that was not worn so much. This one measures 1.25 thereabouts. About yeah, 1.25. This one's going to go here on, as it was originally. If I measure this worn out shim, it's about, it's about 0.75 I'd say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this shim in. So that this is one mil. We already know that the two new ones that I've got, they are one mil. So yeah, we're just going to put, basically, just going to stack two of the one mils up on each side like that. So this will be about an extra one mil, actually. If you take, if, if you take into consideration some of the material that we've already taken off, my guess is just a really approximate. It's probably between 0.5 to one mil of extra. We'll put it all back together and if it's still not tight then I'll have to take it apart again and we'll put another shim in there. To begin with we are going to need some diff oil. Okay I'm going to start by putting the new shims in in this oil. So put the first shim in, put the first shim on. 
the second shim and then with this one here it's going to get messy guys sorry this is just the space i've got to work with all right so i want to just coat in there with oil it's going to get messy quick just coat that surface in oil and I'm going to coat the sides with oil. Basically just everywhere the planetary gear set's going to sit. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this, but I think I'm going to. So we're just installing everything in pieces now. So two shims, this side of the planetary gear set. And we just want to... All right, ah, yes, finally. So I've got the planet, planet gears. I've got the planet gears in. And yeah, I think we're on a win here. It's just a fiddly, fiddly job. Sweet. Next, we want to take the original shim for this side because this shim was fine it was there was no wear whatsoever on it just coat everything in oil again yeah same with this side even the mating even the surfaces where it gets clamped together you don't have to but I'm choosing to Okay, so we've got our shim, don't forget the shim, it's stuck on there, so I'm not going to pull it off, that's fine. And just line it up with the holes, and the two holes for the Phillips head screws, which the screws are here. So you're going to flip that over, grab your Phillips head screwdriver, impact screwdriver. So now we will move on with installing the crown wheel and so we need to apply a little bit of Loctite to each bolt. I'm just coating where the head of the bolt will sit just in oil. Okay guys, I had to take the ring gear back off and the reason being is that internally the splines don't line up with the full length of the shaft. So you want to actually just dummy fit the stub axle shafts first. So I'm going to hammer this one back in. So that's pretty much all the way in now. If you don't get these lined up, You'll do what I just did before, and I've done this before. It's just been so long since I've actually done one of these diffs up. Um, but yeah, make sure you always line up the two sets of splines internally, and that, that's how you do it. You just do it by inserting, dummy inserting these shafts, these stub axles. So, all right. So now we can proceed to refit everything. All right, now I'm happy they're really tight. They've got Loctite and my gun, that little gun that I was using, that, that actually goes up to about 160 Newton meters. So it's pretty damn tight. Um, and with the Loctite, like they're, they're not gonna come undone. Now I'm just gonna dummy fit these stub axles again. 
make sure everything lines up and it hasn't moved because we don't want any problems when we go to put the center in and we go to put these back in. All right, that's great. That lines up nicely. So we can get out the oil and we can just pour a bit onto the pinion shaft. Okay, so now it's time we grab the center, the diff center. So yeah, that's how you get it in guys, just with persistence and making sure you get all those shims all lined up nicely, as flat as you can, and just progressively tap them in on each side evenly, and then it'll, it'll make its way in, into its home location. So zooming in, we can see the shims that I've installed. Uh, these are the new shims. There's two stacked on top of each other. Okay, so I've just gone around the edge of the diff just to clean it up because there was just a few little rust spots. Um, I've hit it with brake cleaner and yeah, just previous to that, just a little bit of wet and dry sandpaper. And I've done the same with the diff hat. As you can see, just around the edges. I've just hit it with a little bit of wet and dry and brake cleaner and that's all good for the reseal. And we've also got the gasket here, which you can see where I actually marked out the dot. So that just goes there. The dot, one dot for the passenger side and two dots for the driver's side. And you can see on the caps here where I marked it out. So that'll go like that. Yeah, same on this side. D for driver side and two dots there, which match match up with the two dots. Alrighty, this is the fun part. Now we get to put it all back together and reseal the diff hat. So next we need to get the carriers for the bearings, which are here, which I've marked out. And we need to apply oil to them because on the underneath side, that's where they contact the bearing cap. We need to coat the threads in oil. That's really important. We don't want the threads to be dry. Make sure you start each bolt a number of turns. Okay, on to the next. And get ready to do that. Try not to do what I just did before. Where were we? Okay, so the next bearing cap. Just want to coat that in oil. Same as the other side. Coat the bolt threads in oil. Including the head of the bolt. A bit of oil on the head of the bolt. So that basically when you torque it down, the torque setting that you apply is not interfered, like it's not distorted. It's not a distorted reading. Because the head, if it's the, if the head of the bolt is dry, it can bind up and and you can, you can just throw out your torque reading. 
Okay, now that I've started each bolt for the bearing caps, I can now do them up with my gun. I'm going to torque it up to 90 newton meters. It's best to just lay it down, grab your torque wrench. It's pretty dang tight. This is where going to the gym really helps. Next, we want to grease up the splines on the stub axles themselves and insert the stub axles into the dip center. Shorter stub axle goes in the passenger side. I've already greased up that seal. And insert it into the other side of the LSD center. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is reseal the diff hat right here. So I've got some RTV. Really don't need much for this. We only want a light coat, just both sides, um, because the gasket's actually already in good condition. So we just want a little bit of a uh, little bit of a light film just to seal it that extra. Now make sure that you fit it the right way around because you can get these, you can stuff these up and you can put it upside down. And you only got to find out when you probably go to put it back in. Now grab the gasket, stick the gasket on, give a little tap around, around the edge just to get it to stick a bit. Now make sure it's the right way around. It's not upside down. Add one last look and cross your fingers. And she's good to go on. Now I haven't filled it up with oil because I've actually got an ABS sensor. Uh, there's one right there and that's disconnected. So if I filled it up with oil, oil would just run out. Now I do the bolts up nice and evenly. Now we can torque them up to the right torque setting. So the torque for these bolts, I looked it up, it's about 45 newton meters. I've just set it to 45. All right, if you want to make it easy on yourself, like I probably should have, just put it on the ground. The only reason I didn't want to was because I've just painted the thing. Hey, thanks for watching guys. I really hope that you got some value out of this and you're now able to be equipped and shim your own R200 diff. Hey, I want to thank you for staying with me and I really hope that you enjoyed what I was able to show you tonight. If you really liked the video, please smash the thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already so that you can stay informed and when new S15 content comes out, you'll be able to be the first in. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.